we are talking about the new Nectar Research Cloud GPU service and reservation system. Um, I'm going to be your facilitator for today. Um, I've also got uh, our key speaker, Paul Coddington, who is one of our uh, directors at uh, ARDC for the Nectar Cloud, and then also Sam Morrison, um, who will be conducting the demo um, for you all today to see how the uh, system works. So, if Paul, I could ask you to go to the next slide. Uh, just also, um, before we begin, I just want to give an acknowledgement of country. So, acknowledging um, and celebrating the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet today. For me, which is the Wurundjeri, Woi and uh, Wurrung and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. And we pay um, the lands on which we meet and we pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So today, um, just to give you a scope of what we are covering, uh, so we are going to give a uh, overview of the Nectar Cloud itself, because we, just a very brief one, because we may be aware that you may have heard about this service, but not actually um, use the Nectar Cloud before, so we just wanted to touch base on that. Um, we'll talk about why we brought in uh, this service, uh, what are some of the processes involved for using the service, what hardware specifications we are offering. Um, then we'll launch into our demo and then we'll talk about some user support available to you and some time for Q&A. And of course, just a little bit of uh, Zoom housekeeping. So um, if you can keep your microphone on mute for the duration of the presentation time. Um, if you have any questions uh, during the session, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll, we will address them as we go. Or if you want to, you can also just save it for the Q and A time at the end. And of course, um, you know, we are recording uh, this session. So now I will uh, hand over to Paul, uh, who's going to um, kick off the information about Nectar Cloud and then the processes behind uh, this, the new service. Thanks, Sonia. Yeah, so I'm Paul Coddington. I'm uh, at the ARDC. I'm um, responsible for the Nectar Research Cloud. So just briefly, the Nectar Cloud has been around for 10 years now. Um, it's run by the uh, ARDC, Australian Research Data Commons. It's made, it's actually a federation of several uh, partner organizations uh, or, or nodes as we call them. So the nodes are responsible for running the infrastructure, the compute and storage hardware, including the GPUs and large memory servers that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and ARDC core services team is responsible for running the central cloud services that sort of glues it all together and into a, into a federation that looks like a, a single um, cloud service. So it's quite a large resource. As you can see on the left there, there's um, a large number of um, physical and virtual um, CPU cores, quite a lot of uh, storage, both object and volume or file space storage, uh, and a large number of GPUs, some of which are already there and some of which are still on the way. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so in terms of access, the Nectar Research Cloud is an Australian uh, national research infrastructure. Uh, you log into the Nectar Cloud through the web dashboard and access it through a web dashboard. Uh, you just log in using your university username and password through the Australian Access Federation. Uh, anyone who has an AEF account can, can just log in and try out the Nectar Cloud with a, a six month project trial. Um, and then if you meet appropriate criteria, you can make a project allocation request. So you can get a uh, sort of long-term larger amounts of resources. So essentially the criteria are, you meet a national merit allocation, which basically just means you have a research grant or you're, uh, you're, you're part of a project that's uh, supported by ARDC or some other increase facility, uh, or else you can also get an allocation if you are a, a researcher that's associated with a particular Nectar node, can also provide what we call local or local node allocation. Uh, there are sort of other uh, areas, but the, the, that's the main criteria. Um, so basically that's how to use the Nectar Research Cloud at a glance, but you know, first we have, uh, uh, you should read the user guide. So there's a, a Cloud Basics user guide and a getting started tutorial on our user support webpage. 
So uh, onto the, the new services I wanna talk about. So we are focusing, we, or we are providing a GPU and a large memory service through a reservation system. So I'll talk a little bit about why we're doing that. So there's a, a growing demand for sort of high-end compute infrastructure in the research sector. The NECDA cloud has been running for, for, for 10 years now, and we mostly just provide generic sort of compute resource, CPUs or virtual CPUs. But there's a lot of demand for higher end infrastructure. So particularly GPUs and also for mostly for machine learning, but also for image processing and for simulation and modeling, and also for large memory machines to handle sort of very large data sets, large scale analysis and simulation or high resolution modeling, things like that. So we've already seen this and we've supported this at ARDC in the ARDC platforms, the research platforms and the platforms projects that ARDC supports. So we have provided them with some dedicated GPUs and large memory servers. So things like the characterization virtual lab, the drones platforms being developed, uh, Galaxy, the bioinformatics platform and several other eco commons and some other platforms are using these sort of high end compute infrastructure that's provided by ARDC, but that's dedicated to the specific um, uh, platforms projects. We also have seen um, the, the nodes, our node partners in the Nectar Research Cloud also provisioning some GPUs and large memory servers for their, for their researchers as well. But we haven't in the past provided just a national service that anyone who meets the national merit criteria can use. So that's what, what we're aiming to do, or we have done now. Just a basic infrastructure as a service for GPUs and for large memory servers. Now, there's some issues around this, one of which is these things are expensive, right? GPUs and large memory servers are quite expensive and the Nectar cloud infrastructure is provided at no cost to researchers. So we want to make sure they're utilized effectively. We don't wanna have the situation where a project might fire up a, a virtual machine with GPUs or large memory and, and only use it sort of intermittently. We wanna make sure we get good utilization of that. Now that doesn't happen in commercial cloud because these things are very expensive, right? You pay for usage and it doesn't happen in uh, clusters or HPC systems where people use GPUs because you submit it to a queuing system and it runs when the resource is free and it finishes when you, your job finishes. But that doesn't allow you to do you know, interactive uh, work and it means you have to sit in a queue for, uh, and wait for you know, an arbitrary long period of time before you get your, your access to your GPU. So we wanna provide people with access for interactive use uh, at a time that they uh, want to specify, um, but we wanna make sure we get reasonable usage of these expensive um, uh, infrastructure. So the way we're doing that is essentially twofold. One of which is we're virtualizing the GPUs. So multiple users can or projects can get access to a single GPU. So if one of them maybe isn't using it right at this very moment, the others can use the additional uh, resources and also a reservation system. So you need to book a particular time that you want to use the service. And once that time is up, the, the resource gets freed up so other people can use it. So you can't just sit on it if you're not, if you're not using it. Okay, so we had to do a couple of things to, to enable this. One of which is, uh, and those of you who have used the Nectar Research Cloud will be familiar with this. We've moved from a, the previously where we had uh, quotas. So people, their project in the Nectar Cloud gets a resource quota for their project allocation. In the past, that was a maximum limit quota. It was essentially like, I have a quota of 10 virtual CPUs, which basically means I can never use more than 10 virtual CPUs at any given time. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. But we wanted to make it more flexible so we could support additional resources, GPUs, large memory machines, et cetera, that, that were, um, that were uh, you know, cost more essentially, or, you know, higher end than the just a generic virtual CPUs. Um, and we also wanted to make, uh, allow for sort of more burst to use. So, you know, most of the time someone might only want to use 10 um, virtual CPUs or, but they might want to use 50 for, you know, a week or, or a day or something like that. So we wanted to, to make it more flexible to allow that. So we introduced the concept of service units. Now service units will be familiar to anyone who's used HPC systems. It's basically a unit of, you know, of resource usage. 
in commercial cloud, the service units equivalent is dollars, right? I pay a certain amount of dollars and I use a certain amount of based on how much resource I actually use. So essentially that's what we're doing here. We're, we're asking people to provide their quotas or an estimate of how much they want to use in these service units. A virtual CPU has a certain number of service units. A GPU will have a larger number of service units. Uh, a virtual CPU with a lot of memory will have a larger number of service units. So, so each of the flavors of uh, instances that we have in the Nectar Cloud um, has, a, has a certain service unit cost associated with it. Um, we've made some modifications to the Nectar dashboard to support this. So if people ask for a quota in service units, they'll see in their dashboard a sort of line that says, you know, if you burn through your service units at a constant rate of usage, here's the straight line that that, uh, that entails. And then there's the sort of a blue line that shows what your actual usage is over time. So you can see if you're burning through your service unit allocation sort of quicker or slower than, than you should be. And we also show, you know, the usage uh, on each, each day, essentially, you can see your daily usage and how it goes up and down. So that helps people estimate how much they should be asking for and see how much they're using. Now, so that, that's been in place for a while now. We've had these uh, service unit allocations for a few months now in the Nectar Cloud. But now that we've introduced a reservation system, we had to add an additional component, which is a reservation system allocation. So you need, as well as your standard service unit quota, your project needs to ask for quota in the reservation system. Um, so that basically is how many reservations would I like to make in the next, you know, in the period of my allocation, which is usually, you know, a year or a few months. Um, and how many total days do I want to use the reservation system for? Uh, we've made reservations in units of days. We figured people mostly would want at least a day to use the, the system. And we've given it a maximum of two weeks. Now that maximum is, can be varied based on different flavors. Um, so the standard flavors that we provide in Nectar have a maximum of two weeks, but nodes or can, can provide sort of private special flavors if you really need it for longer than that. Um, reservations start at end at zero UTC, which is about 11 o'clock these days, Australian Eastern Stand, uh, Daylight Time. Um, and as I said, last for, for at least a day or units of a day. So you need to ask for your reservation quota, you know, number of reservations and total days across all of your reservations that you want for. And so once you've requested reservation quota and service unit standard quota that you need to do anything in the next cloud, um, and it's been approved, you can go into the dashboard and book a reservation. Basically, you just pick a date that you want to use the, the GPUs or the large memory servers, select, or see if there's any free slots at particular nodes or for particular flavors that you want, pick a flavor for a particular time slot, click the button and book it and away you go. So we'll have a demo of how exactly how to do that shortly. Um, in terms of the requesting the reservation, here's a sort of snapshot of the, or a screenshot of the, of the reservation service. Again, you just go into the, the new request, the standard form you would fill in for, a, for an allocation request on the Nectar Cloud. And there's this basically extra section. You can click a button to say, I want to book, uh, I want some allocation for the reservation service. So you'll see that's clicked in and that's green. There's an on green on button because I've clicked that on. And now I can say, well, I want maybe five reservations I'm thinking of using uh, probably for roughly 10 days each. So a total duration of 50 days, I want to get a request for. And you can say, do I want to use GPUs or do I want to use large memory, which we call huge RAM flavors, or do I want to use both? So here I've said, I want to use both. So when I go into the reservation system to actually reserve uh, a slot, um, it will show me here's what your, uh, your reservation system quota is. So the quota in this case is 20 days. And here's what your service unit uh, budget is, which is 3000 service units in this case. So if I try to book a slot for four days, it'll say, yep, that's good. Four days it takes you from three days that you've already used to seven days and you've got a, a quota of 20, so that's all fine. But if you use up all those four days, 
your service unit budget will you'll have used up more than 3000 which is your budget so sorry you're not eligible to do that you'll have to either ask for less after a smaller reservation or ask for more quota basically and in the nectar cloud you're allowed to ask for more quota at any time so you just go in um, revise your request form resubmit it and you can ask for more quota so one, one thing we've done uh, with the service is to come up with standard um, flavors for the GPUs and large memory uh, machines or large memory servers. So there's already a bunch of existing um, standard flavors in Nectar from tiny balanced, balanced is about two gig per, two gigabytes of memory per virtual CPU. RAM optimized is about four gig. And then we have some huge RAM flavors, which are bigger than that. Um, so we added some GPU um, flavors as well. There are two different kinds of GPU flavors, essentially based on the two different kinds of GPUs that we make available, which are the A100s, which are essentially for compute, and the A40s, which are essentially for visualization or, or rendering and or sh you know showing things. You you can't you can't use the A100s for visualization, so the A40s are really for that. And then we've got standard flavors for huge memory. Um, which are similar to the existing huge memory flavors that we have in the Nectar Cloud, but they just go bigger. And also all of the flavors, the huge memory and the GPUs have very large amounts of fast local disk. So we figure if you wanna do some big computations on large data sets, you wanna have some large uh, fast local disk to, to make the IO fast. So when you go into, into the Nectar um, system, the, the dashboard to reserve or to, you know, in any, any time you want to fire up a virtual machine in the Nectar Cloud, you'll be, you'll be showing this list of standard flavors that we have available uh, with a bit of info about what all the flavors are uh, and you can pick from them. So in the bottom uh, box there with the green bars, that's essentially what you'll see in the reservation system. Here's some dates. The green shows that there's some free slots there for the particular flavors that are shown on the left. So you can see there's a G2 small and H4 large and uh, for different sites, Monash, uh, Queensland, Tasmania, etc. So you basically pick a flavor and pick a, a, a node or a site that you want to run on. So just quickly, um, a little bit more detail about the flavors. This is all on the, the Nectar user support site, the detail here. But for the G1 instances, which are the A40s essentially, uh, we have basically three sizes, small, medium, and large. And basically these are just how much have we, have we virtualized the A40? How much have we split it up? So a large is essentially, A40s have 48 gigabytes of GPU RAM. So a large is basically saying we're, we're putting two larges on that because each one has 24 gig. A medium is we're splitting it up um, to four virtual GPUs per physical GPU. And a small is um, six. So it's basically how much you virtualize it. And then we have different amounts of vCPUs that were, and, and standard uh, memory that were RAM that we have with, associated with those as well. Um, we have the standard usual 30 gigabytes of root disk that we provide for all standard nectar flavors. But you can see we've got this ephemeral disk as well. This is the large, fast, local disk that you can essentially like um, fast scratch disk that you can put your data on and, and read and write to uh, uh, very quickly. And then you'll see we've also got the service unit cost for the different um, flavors as well. For the GPU, the G2 flavors for the A100s, we, they have 80 gig of, of uh, GPU memory. So we can slice those up in a, in a few more ways from uh, extra, from again, from two virtual GPUs for physical GPU all the way up to 10, um, each of which has eight gig making up the 80 gig. Um, I should say that each of these standard flavors um, we, we have, well, obviously we have physical servers, physical GPU servers and large memory servers that we run this on. Every physical server, the way that the NVIDIA licensing for the virtualization works, can only have a single flavor. So one virtual, a one physical GPU server might just support extra large, the G2 extra large flavors. Another one might support the G2 large flavors. Another one might support the G2 small flavors. 
So at the moment, we um, have split them up into a, into a number of different services. So we don't, at the moment, support all of these flavors, but we do support most of them at the moment. And eventually, we'll be able to support all of them once we get some, some additional servers added to the, to the infrastructure. And then finally, the uh, huge RAM flavors, uh, which will go, I think the current huge RAM flavors, the H3 class only go up to about 360 gig. These ones go up to four, also offer 480 and 960. So almost a terabyte of RAM per virtual machine, 128 virtual CPUs. So this is a pretty grunty uh, virtual machine um, and two terabytes of uh, fast NVMe ephemeral disk. So, um, so yeah, that's a pretty substantial virtual machine. So for, we have uh, procured 16 GPU servers and several large memory servers to go into this reservation system to be available for national use. Um, also, some of the nodes have bought their own infrastructure to provide for their own local researchers. The GPU servers have either two or four of the latest NVIDIA GPUs. So I think in total, we have about 44 GPUs that we're, we're providing into the system. I've already said they're a mixture of A100 or A40s. Um, and we've also, we, we needed to have uh, licenses for the virtualization. So um, we use the two different kinds of licenses that NVIDIA provides for the two different types of servers. Uh, the VCS licenses basically allow you to split things up in a more efficient way than the, the, the sort of free way you can do it. Basically, you split it up based on memory, but if, if someone is, if a virtual machine is not using the, the GPU at, at a given time, the other virtual machines that are using it can basically steal that compute resource off the, the that's unused. So, um, whereas in the previous way that we've done the virtualization, the MIG, um, it's all statically um, split up. So if someone's not using the compute, it just goes to waste essentially. So the, the virtualization licenses make them again, more efficient use of the GPUs. Um, now I should say we don't at the moment have all of the servers in place due to um, COVID, global supply chain issues, et cetera. Um, there have been delays in procuring the infrastructure. So we don't have all of it in place at the moment, but we do have some of it in place and we'll, the, the rest of it will be coming soon. So we've got uh, resources set up to, to try to provide a sort of fair and equitable allocation of the resources, make sure they get efficiently used. Um, there's a reservation system to do that, but also you can use a reservation system. For example, you have a training course in machine learning or something like that, and you need to reserve a number of virtual machines with GPUs um, for a couple of days for a training course, for example, you can do that through the system. Um, we've designed the, the different flavors that we just said um, based on what we think the requirements for researchers are and based on the obvious way to sort of split up or virtualize the, the infrastructure that, that is supported by NVIDIA virtualization licenses. Um, and it's probably worth pointing out that these GPUs are the latest and greatest kind. You can't actually get access to those on any of the standard big platforms and Amazon, Google, et cetera, in Australia yet. You can get them over from overseas, but they're in, in, in the Australian availability zones. They don't have these, uh, these size flavors for these GPUs at the moment. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I should say that we had a pilot launch of the system. Um, in August uh, with a small number of users to sort of test it out. Uh, it seems to be working all fine. So we launched it as a beta release on, in September. So about a month ago um, with only a small amount of resources. As I said, we've, we've, had, we've struggled to procure some of the infrastructure in, in a sort of timely fashion that we were hoping for. Um, but we will gradually add to that capacity over the next couple months. We already added uh, four new servers last week, four new GPU servers last week. So we have six GPU servers, about 24 GPUs at the moment. Um, and we expect to get six more in the next month and have all of them by the end of the year. So by the end of the year, given the sort of way we want to do the virtualization, at least initially, we'll have roughly 250 virtual GPUs available for use. So quite a significant resource for people to access. Um, as I said, they're available to any project that meets the national merit criteria. Um, and at some of our nodes, they will have uh, allocations for projects that don't meet national merit criteria, but uh, 
but they'll let them uh, be used by their own local researchers because they paid for them. Um, it's worth pointing out that this is a sort of first pass, you know, the, the flavors that we have, the limits on, you know, you can have it for a maximum of two weeks, etc. cetera. Um, this is all initial sort of what we think we want based on initial discussions with users, but we will review this periodically. We can always, we expect, for example, we will need to change the mix of flavors. So as I said, you have to, for each virtual machine, hyper, sorry, for each hypervisor, you need to pick, you know, it can only have virtual machines of this flavor. So we're sort of having a mix of them initially, but we may find out that, you know, most usage is for particular kinds of flavors. So we will provide more of those and less of the other ones as we get. So that's just something we'll learn as we go along. Uh, so we are looking for feedback on the service from people. Um, so please let us know if you have any good suggestions for what we could do differently or better. Um, so the participating nodes that ARDC has invested in infrastructure and the nodes have provided co-investment in this infrastructure as well. Uh, the ones on the left has University of Tasmania, Monash, uh, Intersect in, in Sydney and QCIF in uh, Brisbane, which has most of the Queensland universities as members, uh, Swinburne and Monash and Auckland also have their own GPUs that they uh, are expected to add into the system um, for their own users uh, shortly. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I will hopefully hand over to Sam now to give us a demo. So I will stop my screen sharing. Uh, yep, Sorry, Sam is it. here. Yep, thanks, <laughs> Sam. Um, just while we're doing the changeover, we did, um, Sam, you can set up. Uh, we did have a question in the chat from Afnan who asked, is this only applicable to GPU allocations or for other NECTA users as well? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by this. <laughs> um, so I was, I was sorry, I was referring to the service units and that kind of structure. Ah, that we right. Have. Okay. Yeah, no service units for everything. So whatever you want to use on the Nectar Research Cloud, you need to uh, specify a, a service unit budget. Uh, it's just that GPUs have a higher service unit than than the standard vCPUs. Yeah. So would I be wrong if I say that we, uh, the whole structure has been modified, so everything now will, uh, will be based on the service units? Yeah, it already had been modified a few months ago based on service yep. units in anticipation of some new services such as this one and others that will, would, need, would, you know, would really need the service units to be able to function at all. So yes, so it was set up like this a few months ago. What's new is that we've just got these standard GPU flavors with associated service units attached to them. Thank you. Uh, I see there's another question which I may as well try and answer while Sam's setting up. Um, uh, so yeah, all of that stuff is up to the user. So we're just providing infrastructure as a service. So it's up to you to provide the software or you can run essentially whatever OS you want. We provide standard um, default uh, virtual machine images for certain types of um, operating system, including Ubuntu uh, and a couple others, I think. Uh, others might want to chip in and tell me here, but, but yeah, you, you can run pretty much anything you like except Windows because of licensing issues. I was just going to mention for the, um... For the GPUs, you we have a we provide a Ubuntu image for that, um, and that's hooked up into our license server. So it'll um, because you need a license to to run the instance. Um, yep, that's to run in, in Nvidia. But what about a license yep. service like things like um, Metashape, where you need you've got your own um, floating licenses? Can this connect back into your institution to pull a license from that license server, or is there box in terms of ports, et cetera? Um, that's probably on a per in institution basis. So um, I'm not sure uh, exactly how that would work, but- Yeah, it I should know. be yeah. okay. We do yeah. have some sites using licensed software. That's something you'd have to talk to the node about. So if you're gonna run it in New Melbourne or QCIF or whatever, you'd have to talk to them about it. It sort of depends, you know, there's no problem with opening ports to, to license servers or whatever. It's just sometimes there are 
gotchas in the license like you know you must run if it's you know if it's a university of melbourne license you must run it on university of melbourne infrastructure or you know there's, there's stuff like that but yeah in principle it's doable but the details you'll have to sort out with your institution and the and the node that you want to run the uh, the gpus on cool thanks Uh, Sam, right, Sam, hand over to ahead. you. Yep. yep. All right. Um, my demo is going to be maybe a bit boring for people who are familiar with the dashboard, but if they're not, then maybe you get something of it. Um, I'm just going to go through just um, some of the changes that we've made, um, particularly just around the reservation system and kind of how you would go about getting a GPU instance. Um, the first thing is you'll need uh, an allocation. We don't uh, uh, we don't give that to you know, project trials. So you would need to either request a new allocation or uh, update your existing allocation. Um, I'm not going to go through this, but essentially there is, you'll see there's a new section here, reservation service, and you'll need to enable that and ask for a certain amount of simultaneous reservations and, and kind of how many days you want to be reserved. And, you know, if you, you know, if you just want access to GP flavors or the huge RAM flavors. So that's kind of your first step. Go go get your project um, some reservation quota. Um, once you do have reservation quota, uh, you can go into our new tab here, reservations under the compute tab. Uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very similar to anything else in the dashboard. Um, I've already created one, um, but we'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, we'll go to uh, create a new one, uh, create reservation. Uh, we've got some information here, just you know, you can, what your quota is. Um, I'm already, I've already created one reservation for six days, so you can, you can kind of see there um, what I've used and what I've got available. And then down, down here, we've got all the flavors that we support uh, at different sites. Uh, you can kind of filter by if you just want a huge RAM type or a GPU type, uh, or if you want something specifically, you know, if you want a Monash, you know, GPU. Uh, you can see here Monash is supporting three of the flavors. Um, you'll see here there's 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 um, a, the flavors are available to schedule or reserve from today, right up until uh, we've got up until the is that the first of December. We're kind of at the moment we're not allowing people to reserve too far in the future at the moment, just because we might want to change the flavors and we have to reconfigure the hardware and things like that. Um, but essentially, you know, all these at the moment, all of our flavors are, have got plenty of capacity because they are all showing up as available. Um, so it's not exciting because I don't have any. Oh, you can see these these flavors here aren't as aren't as um, available for as, as long as these ones. Um, click on the time period you want. So if I want to get it starting from now, maybe I'll do a mon G2 small and I'll start it, you know, from. Uh, well, we can start from now. Um, quite enough quota just actually I'm going to just change this because I want to make sure I have a little bit more quota so we'll just say we'll run for four days so four days yeah and click reserve um, so that's going to go and create a reservation for you make sure the hardware's you know free um, and you'll notice it goes into allocated status so that just means that the reservation has been allocated to you and when the time comes to start that reservation it'll um, it'll change to active um, you can see here, I've got a reservation that is active already. Um, and once the reservation is active, uh, you'll get an email to tell you, remind you kind of thing that it is active. And um, uh, then you can go and launch, right? Um, so once the reservation becomes active, we can now boot an instance. And I come into here. Give it a test, and we're going to choose the NVIDIA NVIDIA GPU image that we have. So that's got that's kind of hooked into the license server, as I mentioned before, and it has a few libraries installed. We're still kind of, uh, you know, open to adding more stuff to this image if we need to. You know, we're, we're, so if you if you know you think it's not as useful to you and it could be made better, then let us know. We can kind of add more stuff to that image. Um, and then this is where the reservation comes in. So once the reservation is active, a new flavor is created for you and it's dedicated to you. Um, and it will be called, you know, reservation dash uh, and then a, a UID. If I just kind of go back, if 
like oh, well, I'll launch it first if I select that reservation flavor you can see it's specs is what I chose um, we'll just launch that um, and you know we're, we're building now just come back to that um, you can kind of check here if you click on the reservation it'll tell you kind of what the name of the flavor is going to be and just kind of the specs if you need to and kind of when it's going to be reserved to and from Um, all right, so yeah, we've got our GPU flavor. Uh, the one other thing you can do is uh, once your reservation is active, you can extend that reservation. So, uh, you know, you can need it for a bit longer, you know, uh, et cetera. All flavors have a maximum time that they can be reserved for at a, at a time. So I think this reservation here can be reserved for 14 days at a time. Um, but because I've already been using it for a day, I think, when did I do this? Is it yesterday? Yeah. Um, I can add it, I can extend that out to a few more days. Uh, we can add, I think, not quite, I'm coming up against some quota here, as you can see, but we can, I can push it out another ten, extra 10 days, which is maybe nine days. Um, that's, I mean, that's from a from a dashboard point of view. That's 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 all really. And the only other function you can do is delete a reservation if you wanted to delete it early. You know, if you're not using the reservation, then please delete the reservation so it frees up that capacity for other other people. Um, so yeah, that's that's me. Um, I guess we can open up to questions unless Sonia wants to, or if I've forgotten anything. Uh, thanks, Sam. I'll just uh, quickly talk to some of the user support um, things that we have available to you as a user of this service and of the Nectar Cloud, and then we will uh, launch into questions. I just said I did actually forget one thing that's quite important. Um, so it. once the uh, reservation ends, uh, it'll delete the instance. So you want to make sure you'll get a warning email about that. So an email will be sent out to you before it doesn't, it, it gives you kind of like a before delete. And it depends how long the reservation's been for to when that warning is. So if it's quite a long reservation, it might give you a week. Or if it's a shorter one, it might give you a day warning. Um, so I we really recommend if you, if you, you know, you've got data generating, then to use a, a, a volume to, to, to generate that data onto. So when the instance is deleted, you keep your, your data on that volume. Uh, yes, so uh, shall I answer this question or, we, or do you want to go? Go for it, answer the question. Uh, so yeah, from a, from a um, service unit usage point of view, we will charge you from when the reservation starts, even if you don't boot an instance, we'll charge you from when the reservation starts until either the reservation ends or you delete the reservation. So uh, that's how to answer your question then. So yeah, if you if you don't use all of it and you delete it early, then yes, you won't be charged for the extra. And yes, you can use any uh, image you want with the system. Um, you're gonna get into problems with, uh, if you're using a GPU flavor, uh, we just to make sure that it can Get the license so that's why we kind of provided an image because it is quite tricky because of the, the and also the drivers the drivers of the image need to match up with the drivers on the hardware and also the um the licensing so there's that's why it's it's i think it's going to be quite difficult for us to, to well, for, for anyone to do it themselves but i mean no, the, 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 the power's there to for to do it for advanced people but uh and if we if there's the image that we provide isn't you know suitable or uh, we we can help you there or make a different image and stuff like that as well. So we're, we're wanting to do that. Uh, over to you, Sonia. Thanks, Sam. Um, I'll just uh, bring back some slides. Do you want me to stop sharing? Are you... No, I think we're all good. Yep. Oh, cool. um, so just a quick final uh, wrap up point. So in terms of what we can do for you as well for a user support, um, perspective in using this service and anything else on the Nectar Cloud. Um, so we do have a range of support articles covering this topic and other topics that are connected, as well as, you know, things like launching an instance. Um, if you haven't done that before, we have detailed tutorials and articles about 
that. Um, we do have a support team who is available to answer tickets between 7am and 6pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time uh, and also an online live chat function um, if you need to uh, want to chat to someone in real time and ask questions. So we are definitely here to um, help you in whatever your needs are. And of course, specifically in terms of the GPU service documentation, we have articles on how to make a reservation. So basically what you um, witnessed in the demo and then how to use the GPU or large memory resources. So how to launch that instance and then dive in and use it. And then of course, those um, tables you saw with the uh, different like specs of each of the flavors we're offering, we do have detailed specifications on our flavors page. And we will send a link to all these articles and at some point a link to the recording. Uh, after this session has concluded. So um, now that we've covered what we've wanted to cover today, uh, we're into um, question time. So if there are any other questions, feel free to unmute or write in the chat and we can address them as they come up. So I'll go over to you, everyone. Uh, Laura asked in the chat, uh, is there any tutorial about how to log into the instance using SSH? Um, yes, we do have a generic um, how to access your instance via SSH. I can include that tutorial link in the post event email for everyone. With the reservation, say I, I reserve something for Thursday, I get hit by a bus on Wednesday or something less drastic, and you're unable to complete that or do anything on that Thursday, because it's reserved and taken, you can't get to do anything to delete or whatever due to some reason, that reservation time gets used up and you've lost those credits? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Cool. Hopefully you don't get hit by bus. <laughs> Yeah, though I said it was something less drastic. So, <laughs> um, there's a question from Rosalind about uh, national merit allocation, which I saw I'll answer that one. So, there is in in the user guide there is a um, a document specifying the allocation policy that has the details, but essentially, uh, national merit is is basically you know two things. You you either have a competitive research grant. Uh, or you have a project that's supported by ARDC, like an ARDC platforms project or some other ARDC project, or one of the other INCRIS facilities, National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy facilities like ARDC that supports national research infrastructure. Um, so those are the two main criteria. There are a couple of other, you know, if you also meet this you know, if you're also doing this, then maybe the National Allocation Committee can support you. So for example, if you're hosting a service or if you want to host a service that supports, you know, a large number of national uh, researchers, that's another criteria. So there's a couple of others as well, but essentially, yeah, if you have a research grant or an industry grant, if you're funded to, to do uh, work with industry, then, then you meet the national merit criteria. And again, if you don't meet the national merit criteria, but you are a member of one of our, or a researcher at one of our uh, node institutions or node members, then you can talk to them and they may be able to provide you with an allocation as well. And I've popped the link into the um, national allocation scheme policy and um, the section on the merit criteria is in 7.1. I've popped that in the chat. Thanks, Joe. Um, do we have any other questions? Oh, we do. Um, Esme asked in the chat, is the University of Adelaide or La Trobe University a node? Uh, University of Adelaide, yes. They are associated with Intersect. Uh, La Trobe, I'm not sure about, actually. <laughs> um, uh, I'll have to check and get back to you about that one. But Uni Adelaide is. Uh, we can include that information in the post um, training email or event email. 
But again, even if your university is not associated with one of the nectar nodes, as long as you meet the national merit criteria, you are still able to use the infrastructure. Did we have any other further questions from the crowd? Of course, if you um, you sometimes think of questions later after the fact, um, so you can also uh, I've put a link in the chat to our support site. You can simply um, submit a ticket as well if something comes up later that you you think of as a question. Um, sorry, I have a question. Oh, go for it. Um, in regards to, I guess, adverse events, um, in the case that there's a brown outage in the server that's currently being run or some, some kind of like technical details, uh, technical issues, um, what happens with regards to either credit for that period of time that the system is down or for the cases where things take several days to kind of run and it crashes at the end um will it be kind of refunded for the day that the, the time period where the server is down or for the precursory days that it took to run the model um yeah that's a good question uh yeah look i think we can sort something out then as i said you can always uh, ask for more quota at any time, I think if you will submit a quota, an application of new quota and just inform, you know, just made the note that, you know, my, my uh, you know, something went down or so there was some issue or problem, then there wouldn't be a problem for the allocation approvers to, uh, to, to give you more quota to compensate for that, basically. Excellent. Thank you. So um, also, I, the tribe is a member of the Intersect node. Thanks, Joe. Opening up to any final questions, final call. As it seems like we don't have uh, any further questions, I'm going to uh, cap off this session here. But again, if anything comes up in like the next second, feel free to jump in. Um, uh, Wayne, did you have another question? Oh, sorry about that, Wayne. Um, do you want to put it in the chat? Because unfortunately, I can't unmute you. Okay, while we may yep, have another yep, call here, yep. cool. okay, um, can, can you have um, multiple workflows? So there are situations where you would want the desktop uh, experience so that you can look at your models, deform them, do some stuff with it, then take that and send it through to then be computed. So is there a, an easy way to send a workflow from a, the desktop experience through to a compute or would you just have to make Two reservations and then run them up as you require them. Uh, well, you should be able to do both on the, uh, you know, a virtual machine. You can set up a virtual desktop interface to the virtual machine, and you can also obviously just run compute on the virtual machine. So you, you should be able to do both uh, with your with your single reservation. Yeah. Yeah, but because you've got, you know, the you're using the A40s and the the V100s, there's different levels of compute on that. So if you're looking at something that's a heavy, heavy compute and it's going to require more grunt than what your, because you know, the A40 splice off at four gig may take it 10 hours to do the compute, whereas on a V100, it may only take it two hours. Therefore, you know, you're trying to look at your allocations of, I'm now only, over the entire course of this project, I'm only going to spend three hours by maximizing the compute capabilities of each of the different cards. Ah, oh, right. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, if you want to do compute and then do a visualization of something, yeah. 
that would be, would an be issue. two reservations, um, wouldn't it? Yeah, two reservations. Do you get two yep. different play, two different instances of running them? And okay, copy cool. between all. You know, yep. like, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. You could use a. You know, maybe one thing I'd do, like you know, you could have a volume. Uh, you know, boot from the volume on the visualization. Do your visualization, then you know, delete instance, boot again from the same volume on the A100, and then you know, run it. You know, there's things like that you could do, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. yeah. okay, seeing as we are um, getting close to time, um, I'm going to cap off this session here and, and thank everyone for coming today. Um, and I will uh, also um, thank our presenters as well, Paul, uh, Sam, and, and again, participants for being active, appreciate it. Um, so thank you so much all for coming. Again, if you have questions, feel free to go to our support site. There will be a follow-up event email uh, with the resources mentioned, the links, and at some point a recording once it's processed and um, uploaded. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for coming. <laughs>